It's now July, which officially means that the NBA's free agency period is open for business, and with it came an onslaught of signings locked in already. Teams don't waste any time going for the guys that they want, and we've already seen some of the biggest names available in the free agency market get picked up on new deals. But while some teams got their guys early and can walk away satisfied with it, other teams may end up regretting rushing into some of their signings, which brings us to today's video. Today we'll be picking out the three best best, and the three worst signings from day one of free agency based on the fit between the player and the team, the salary that they signed for, and the length of the deal that they signed. Before we start though, it turns out a good amount of you watching right now aren't even subscribed to the channel, so please, if you enjoy the content, consider hitting the subscribe button, as not only does it help out a ton, but I'd also very much appreciate it. Now with that being said, let's begin. We'll start things off with the first of the best signings of the day being Paul George signing with the Philadelphia 76ers for four years worth $212 million. The 76ers went out of their way to set themselves up to make a splash specifically this offseason, so coming out of this time without a big move being made would have been an utter disaster for them. They had the most cap space in the league this summer, and were one of the few teams with enough cap space to even offer players a max contract in free agency. So for them to come away with arguably the best available free agent and a player that fits in so nicely alongside Joel Embiid and Tyrese Maxey, it's a huge win because George is one of the few stars today that also really embraces the spot up catch and shoot part of the game and he knocks down 43% of his shots in those off the catch situations. So it becomes a lot harder to double team a player like Joel Embiid as often as he's been over the years because if they find Paul George wide open, he'll catch he'll capitalize. Of course, a full max contract extension for four years worth $212 million is a lot when George is 34 years old, but the Sixers championship window is very tight with Joel Embiid hitting his 30s too, so they need to be all in as soon as possible, and making an addition like this definitely helps get them in that direction. Now over to the first of the worst signings of the opening day of free agency, we have Tobias Harris going to the Detroit Pistons for two years worth $52 million. The Pistons are in a really difficult spot right now, and there aren't really any clear-cut solutions to get them to the next step in their rebuild, but I can assure you that Tobias Harris is not the guy that will be doing that for them. It's been five years since the Pistons have been in the playoffs, and they're still at a point where there isn't really much light at the the end of the tunnel yet, with an incredibly young team that lacks the firepower of other young rebuilding squads around them. Bringing in Tobias Harris isn't bad in terms of providing a veteran presence in the locker room who has been in the league for 13 years and has played on five different teams and in general has always gotten along well with his teammates, but in terms of providing impactful play on the basketball court, Harris's production has been just about as hollow as it gets over the years. He'll go out and give you about 17 points per game and will drop 20 points points every now and then, but he has some really bad habits in his game regarding shot selection and decision making that can hamper what's happening around him, and the Pistons are basically just solidifying their ceiling at mediocrity in the near future. Now back over to the next of the best signings of the day, we have Chris Paul signing with the San Antonio Spurs for one year worth $11 million. We're not going to sit here and pretend that the Spurs are getting prime all-star Chris Paul or anything close to it, and he definitely didn't have the greatest season in Golden State last year, but still, in spite of all of that, Chris Paul embodies a lot of what the Spurs were in desperate need of. He's a Hall of Famer who got to where he is because of how smart he is as a floor general that gets all of his teammates involved and sets them up for easy looks. Last year in Golden State, Paul's scoring ability was noticeably on the decline, but he was still dishing out a ton of assists, averaging 7 assists per game off the bench, and that's the part of his game that is still incredibly sharp. If there's one thing that the Spurs were in desperate need of, it was a pure point guard that can make Victor Wembanyama's life easier, and that is exactly what Chris Paul can still be at this point in his career. Wembanyama would go viral oftentimes last season for being wide open under under the rim and his teammates would not be able to find him with a pass, leaving countless scoring opportunities missed. And those are the kind of situations that are a lot less of a worry with Chris Paul handling the ball instead of Jeremy Sohan, for example. 
Now over to the next of the worst signings of the day, we have Isaiah Hartenstein signing with the Oklahoma City Thunder for three years worth $87 million. I don't even feel good about including this signing on the bad list for today's video because the fit is pretty seamless and I see why the Thunder targeted someone like Hartenstein, but the price they paid to sign him is way more than I think anybody expected Hartenstein to be signed for. This past season was the first year in Hartenstein's six-year career that he even got to experience what it felt like to be a team's starting center, and it was only for half of the season due to injuries to Mitchell Robinson. Before that, he was a career backup with much less experience. This season, he did absolutely explode, providing to be a high-level interior defender that plays the passing lanes well, uses his body to contest a lot of shots at an elite rate, ranking amongst the league leaders in defended field goal percentage at the rim, he grabs a lot of rebounds, and he's a smart passer for a big man as well. He also only averaged 8 points and 8 rebounds per game though, and hasn't been a starting center full-time yet in his career, and is now making $30 million annually. The Thunder have been so smart about how they've spent their money to this point, and they also have so many draft assets to use in potential future moves, but that's why a signing like this was so surprising, because it feels like an overpay and hurts their future flexibility, which goes against everything the Thunder have done over the last few years. And finally, the last of the three best signings of the day is Klay Thompson signing with the Dallas Mavericks in a sign-and-trade deal for three years worth $50 million. This was one of the more surprising signings of the day since Klay Thompson has been a long-time staple of the most successful dynasty in NBA history and has spent his entire career to this point in Golden State. So the idea of him playing somewhere else was already a little bit strange to the process, but that became easier to swallow when reports dropped about how the Warriors were were going in a new direction and were not looking to re-sign him before the period even opened. There were also teams that were reportedly showing a lot of interest in him when that became clear, but the Mavericks weren't necessarily a team that were popping up in those rumors, so for them to be the team to not only land Klay Thompson, but to sign him to a pretty team-friendly contract is a massive win on their part. It seemed as though money was going to be the disconnect between Klay Thompson and the Warriors moving forward, so he would go elsewhere to sign a bigger contract contract offer, but the Mavericks paying him about $17 million annually for this deal is really not that much at all in today's NBA, where role players regularly are making north of $20 to $30 million annually. Clay may not be the player that he was pre-injury anymore, but he's still a really good shooter, who comes in as a clear upgrade over Tim Hardaway Jr., who the Mavericks are replacing. In that role, and the Mavericks are making it clear that they don't plan on going anywhere after a trip to the NBA Finals. And now, to round things out, the last of the worst signings of the day is James Harden re-signing with the Los Angeles Clippers for two years worth $70 million. The inclusion of this signing on the bad list comes for much different reasoning than the other two, because it's more of a bad look for Harden himself than the Clippers as a team. Last summer, James Harden made a very loud and public outburst where he cut all ties to the Philadelphia 76ers and their front office, and the biggest reasoning behind it at the time was because he felt slighted by the fact that he was not offered a max contract extension by them. He then got his wish and was traded to the Clippers, yet now, even with Paul George leaving the Clippers in free agency, Harden was still not offered a max contract extension as this two-year deal that he just signed is well below what he was expecting to be offered a year ago. The unfortunate truth of the matter is that Harden, at his age and with his game slowing down a ton, is just not worth a max contract anymore, but he burnt a bridge completely in Philadelphia only to realize that no other team was willing to give him what he wanted either. And with that being said, that's all I have for you today. Make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and comment down below which signings stood out the most to you so far. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.